Look, I got the latest TeamOS for developers. 3.9 version, it is the latest one released just a few days ago. And supposedly, it runs VR now. So I have a bunch of VR games we will be testing today. And I will be not using a handheld this time. I got a proper mini PC. Closing specs to the Steam machine. Similar Ryzen CPU. 8 gigs of VRAM. It just has a slightly less compute units. It's like the Steam machine, but at the power of 4 Steam decks instead of the whole 6. And I'm running the Steam Link uh, 2.0 beta on my Quest Pro with eye tracking, so we can test all dynamic encoding and dynamic rendering features. And compare the same games Valve has showed at the event. So maybe let's start with the same Ghost Town demo. This game has awesome optimization, it runs it with reflections, it has lighting and shadow effects, even at the low graphical settings. And it runs 80 FPS stable, so no wonder Valve has chosen this game for the demo. And this game supports eye tracked dynamic foveated render too, to increase the performance in the game. Obviously, all games support foveated uh, eye tracked streaming. And right now it's giving us OK around 25 milliseconds latency, which is already better than, for example, using virtual desktop on your Quest 3. Adam, stop messing about. By the way, I do not see any color banding, any color issues. It actually looks very good right now. And it runs so well. Let's increase the resolution more. Let's put a 2.8K per eye. That would be equal to ultra settings on the virtual desktop running on Quest 3. And yeah, it's still running almost 80 FPS stable. By the way, I'm running the headset at 80 Hz, so this is why it's capped at 80 FPS. Now, I have played this game on a Play for Dream headset on much higher resolution and graphical settings on my uh, Windows PC desktop. And it had almost photorealistic graphics. I could read all these book covers from far away. So here it's definitely not the same graphics running only at the low settings. But still the impressive part, it still has light and reflection effects. So yeah, it has super good performance. But would it run on the Steam frame standalone with just PC emulation? Well, that is not that simple to answer and I will show you why later in this video. And now let's move to the Beat Saber. This one I have side loaded, so it's not a Steam Store game and it had flashed the logo in my headset, but crashed the whole Steam VR. And the problem with the Steam VR crashes many times I have to restart the whole mini PC because I cannot even kill the Steam VR process. It just does not respond or restart without restarting the whole machine. It is possible I need to select specific Proton version or maybe add some launch parameters. Let me know in the comments if any special parameters are needed to run the Beat Saber on Linux. Now you can see streaming uh, just to the desktop. Latency is super low between 10 to 20 milliseconds, just like Valve engineers have bragged about. But this is literally the display port cable latency. So let's try some action online shooters to test the latency in practice. You may have noticed some pink pixel noise around the green button. Same pixels flickering around the forefront logo. That is either VR compositor or GPU driver issue. And it's definitely a pretty common artifact I have noticed in many games running in VR on the Steam OS. Forefront is the latest OpenXR game. So I have set Steam VR as my OpenXR runtime. And you can see it launched and it is running. It is an online game with anti-cheat. So let's see if I will get banned for using Linux. What the hell? Point A secured. Yeah. Point E secured. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Hey, hey, Malthy, get in, get in, Malthy, get in. 
Let's get moving. We're taking over the shit. That's damn yeah, right. Boy. Let's yeah. do it. Could I get an amen? Hey, hey man! Yeah! Get some! Suck some dick! Whoa! Okay, well, <laughs> this turn, this turn, ugly very quick. Whoa, whoa, the gun is totally broken up here, boys. And we are running 2K per eye resolution, and the Steam debug graph just crashed, so it shows me only a black blank window after trying to resize it. So I will use only the Steam status. But I think the game runs at 80 FPS table. It feels perfectly smooth in my headset. Uh. Enemy captured point Roger. And fourth friend is like the new SPC VR game and it works perfect. The second fully working game in Linux and SteamOS. Breachers is another online shooter and it has logged me in online to the server. I had to drop the resolution slightly to make it super smooth to run at same 8 FPS table. I think the resolution is comparable to the Quest 3 standalone, but PC graphics are still better. And yeah, the game runs perfectly smooth now. You can see the pink pixel noise is following me around in the games. And let's see the graphical settings. Actually I was running high settings, so I dropped them now to low. And I could bump the resolution to the 2K per eye. And yeah, the game runs perfectly smooth and 80 FPS, and it looks better than the Quest standalone. Now, if I try to join any online server, I get instantly kicked out with connection timeout uh, error. This game has voice moderation and similar plugins, so maybe not the anti cheats but some similar service might be not allowing me to play online. Well, let's try VR chat with full body tracking next. I will be using Panda trackers. I have all software installed and running, but OVR advanced overlay has crashed the Steam VR again. So basically any OVR, FPS VR overlays crash Steam VR. So I will have to uninstall and disable them. Now you can see Steam settings window is broken too. It does not allow me to resize it. Luckily I can access same settings from inside of VR. And you can see I have full body tracking add-on uh, driver loaded. But the driver does not actually load. There are no trackers in the Steam VR. Luckily for us, VR chat allows to use the OSC connection, which I'm going to enable right now. And you can see I have all body tracking and even face tracking parameters uh, shown in VR chat. Any other calibration, uh, any other full body calibration button appears now. By the way, I can see we are, we are running at only 40 to 50 FPS, but to me the game feels super smooth in my headset. Steam projection does an awesome job here. And the headset, uh, it still feels like a FPS game. So we can join a PC only world now. That you would not be able to visit running VR chat on the Quest standalone or mobile. But you can running the Steam machine. Putting wave mirror on drops FPS down to 30, but still my headset feels perfectly smooth. And now you can see my eye tracking working. This is just the basic VR chat standard eye tracking. I did not install any extra plugins like VR like VR CFT. Yeah, we have full body face tracking. We can visit the Forbidden Quest world, and the world loads. Wow, it even has a better FPS here. 
So we have a bunch of avatars and we are still running at over 40 FPS. This is pretty crazy and take a look how much better this looks over my previous SteamOS 3.7 beta video. There is no color banding, it runs higher resolution, higher FPS. Obviously the mini PC is just more powerful than my Asus ROG Alley handheld. But visually the game looks much better than the last time running it on the Asus ROG and older SteamOS 3.7 beta. I would call this playable. And we can have all PC features, I can use my camera now. I can use my PC avatar, put on my PC hoodie and we can join Just Dance World for the last VRChat test. There is definitely some issue with my height or Steam VR room setup. You may have noticed my avatar was floating above the floor in other worlds and I cannot fix it because I do not have the OVR plugin running. So there is something definitely wrong with my height, which will mess up the full body tracking, making the avatar slide and float around. It could be that I have simply imported my body proportions into the slime server, but I forgot to check VR chat settings if it had my correct height. It does not matter anyway, because you can see the video player has just crashed and it crashed only for me. You can see our avatars are still dancing and the, and the video player time is progressing. So it's just the SteamOS or the Radeon. And I would guess this is the Radeon because it has similar issues with the video players, even uh, running VR chat on Windows. And I guess the only solution is to restart the whole Steam machine again. Restarting the SteamOS is starting to become a trend. And wow, Blade and Saucer runs at 2K per eye at 80 FPS. We can increase the graphic settings, I guess. So it's now on FSR quality upscaling running 2K per eye. And it is the best I have seen this game running on this mini PC. It ran only 50 FPS at lower resolution running it on Windows. So SteamOS definitely performs better. And I have seen many tests for flat screen games. Uh, it's performing around 30% better over the Windows. And you can see my mini PC is drawing only around 50 watts of power. More than any handheld but still pretty low power point consumption. And yeah, we have dynamic shadows, PC shaders, even draw distance is very low. It still looks better than the Quest Candelon in my opinion. But most importantly, I can run PC mods in Blade and Sorcery now. The only sad part, there is no full body tracking because Steam driver add-on loads but does not work in Steam VR yet. And full body is pretty much the only reason I'm even testing the Blade and Sorcery. Because it would be so nice to have a tiny PC or even a standalone headset that would allow me to play the Blade and Sorcery pretty much anywhere, to bring the game outside and play in a huge area. It would be a completely different experience. Then I can have, you know, my whole body and I would be not afraid to move around and kick any decks or wall. The real life sword fighting is half about the leg work and you know keeping my distance dodging and attacking using the full body weight, not just stupidly flaying my wrist. So could you run the PC version of Blade and Sorcery and PC version of VRChat on the Steam Frame standalone with just PC emulation? The answer is definitely no. This minute PC draws 50 watts of power while the steep frame has only 7 watts of power budget. That is like 7 times less. So how the hell we are running PC version of a ghost town? Well to start it's not a PC version, you can clearly see it has the experimental tag. Which means the game has been modded or ported. And if you compare my lowest PC graphics settings on the left 
you can still see volumetric lighting effects around the ship edge, detailed floor and shadows under the table. The standalone version from Dave 2D video looks just like the Quest port. It is completely washed out, there is no lighting, no reflections, and the floor is super low texture. So basically the game has been optimized to use the mobile shaders, and it is a completely different game now. How the Quest standalone games are completely different, and this is why you cannot use PC avatars, join PC worlds, use PC mods on the Quest standalone. Because those walls and avatars do not use the optimized mobile shaders, textures and everything else needed to port and optimize those games for the standalone. And what Valve has been talking about emulating PC games? You can emulate super lightweight games like 2D games, Silk Song, Hates, they run even on a smartphone. Because they are pretty much mobile games, you can download Win later and run the same games on the Quest 3 if you want but you will not be able to emulate modern PC VR titles unless we optimize shaders, textures like the Ghost Time developers did. And then it does not matter if the game is really PC or Quest standalone, it is still a different game from the real like PC PC game that we are used to play on the desktop and that we are used to call a Steam PC game. Now there will be so much confusion when the Steam standalone games will be different and will not support same PC mods and same PC features and walls. And lastly, my Steam machine with power of 4 Steam decks could run Ghost Town Forefront with no issues. So well-optimized VR games definitely will run on the Steam machine on the day one, but probably will be not be able to run all PC VR games well, at least on the launch day. And even for the games that ran well, I had to close my left eye to even go through all the flickering Steam menus and overlays. Steam settings window was broken, overlays did not load, add-ons did not load, there were flickering color noise and many menus and overlays, 2D desktop usually crashes and never restarts, I have to restart the whole machine. So Valve definitely has tons and tons of work to do till 2026 spring release, but at least now it seems feasible that we will be able to launch the Steam machine with a few PC VR games working on a Steam OS. And with time I guess all game developers and all VR tools will slowly be ported to the Steam OS and Steam machine. Just like Steam Deck has launched with only a few games working, and in two years majority of the Steam library is working already, and the updates of the last month allows us to run even some of VR titles now on a Steam Deck or a Steam Machine. And lastly, let's talk about the Steam Machine pricing. So this mini PC was only 1400 euros from China. There are better modern desktop pre-builds for 650 euros here, and all those PCs are sold for profit. So Linus telling he got a side eye from everyone in the room after asking about the Steam machine pricing, if it will be close to consoles like PS5 at 500 bucks. Well, we will have to see if Valve prices the Steam machine like at 800 euros or something. I think nobody will ever buy it. And this worry about uh, you know people buying it for offices or AI centers because it is so cheap. That is completely false. 400 euro Chinese mini PC has the same 8 gigs of VRAM and nobody buys it for AI data centers. Nobody buys it for an office because there are even cheaper mini PCs from China with less powerful integrated graphics. I mean the latest Mac mini is only 550 euros and Mac can play most of new games from Cyberpunk to Assassin's Creed now. So what do you think about the Steam machine and Steam frame pricing? And if you are looking for full body trackers, check the Panda Discord, hit that like button on the video and subscribe for more content, so I can see you in the next one.